I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. Welcome to part seven of the gaff cutter build. In part seven, we're going to do an overview of the deck layout. We're going to create hatches, a skylight. We'll make a cutout for the cockpit and finish that. We put the final colors on. We're going to install some brass tubing to feed the sheet lines down from the spars to the sail servo. We're going to lube up the shafts and we'll end the video by taking this cutter down to the water and trimming it to the water line with interior ballast. Lots of interesting work ahead. Thanks for watching. I'd like to build a hatch here, a hatch up forward and a skylight here. So I have my skylight fit properly. I'm getting my pencil and I'm making a line. Now I'll cut out that curve. I'm using 1 8 inch thick basswood for the sides. And now using my modified compass, I'm going to make a line 3 8 of an inch wide on both pieces. Now I'll cut three pieces out like this. I cut the pieces out of 3 30 seconds basswood. I've lined up the sides, put a little support under the arch on the bottom of these two side pieces, and I put super glue in two corners here and here. I super glued the three frames and added in some one quarter by one sixteenth basswood here. So now it's fairly, uh, fairly rigid. So now I'm planning out my deck layout. I've made the uh, rough outline of the main hatch and the forward hatch out of uh, 1 8 basswood. Down in here, I could cut out the top of the hatch and make sort of a cockpit. I put a steeper angle on the hatch. And I've made a cutout for the cockpit. I'll be saving the piece that I cut out of the hatch so that I can use that for the floor of the cockpit. I've got the front of the hatch and I've supported it by two one inch square weights to uh, raise the front end of the hatch. So now this area is somewhat level and I can use the grid on the table as the bottom level of the uh, cockpit. I've got a 1 8 inch piece of basswood and looks like about 3 16 square and I have uh, super glued them to the sides. So I'm going to set this in position at the back of the cockpit and move a square piece of metal in that will hold it fairly vertical. And now I'm just going to put a couple of drops of super glue on it and fix it into place. I've cut a piece of paper one and three quarter inches wide. This is heavy, heavy construction paper. And I'm going to set it in and let it curl all the way around. So now this piece of paper is level with the table. Now I'm going to get a pencil and lightly mark the paper so now I'm going to put a taper here so that the combing rises as it comes forward towards the hatch. And now I have a paper pattern for the sides of the cockpit. Now using that pattern, I cut two pieces of 1 16 basswood. I cut it cross-grained so it's flexible. I'm using a square weight that's square on all sides so it's perpendicular to the uh, table and I've got it pressed in. So I'm going to put some super glue right here in the corner. So now to fit the uh, after piece on each side here, we'll just use the back end of the pattern. We know this is flat on the table here and we know we've got a right angle. So it's just a matter of marking it out on a, on a piece of uh, 1 16 basswood, cutting it and fitting it in place. So now I've added a second layer of 1 16th basswood. 
I used wood glue on it and clamped it into place. So I took the piece that I cut out of the main hatch and set the cockpit over top and marked it. So now I'll just trim off this piece to the line. And here's the bottom of the cockpit glued in. On the small forward hatch, I've put a piece of 1 8 square down in the bottom so that I can put a screw in from the underside of the hatch and hold it in place. And I've done the same here. And on the skylight, I've added two cross pieces here. I'll be able to fix this into place on the main hatch with two screws from the underside. Now on the skylight, I have some uh, brass rod that looks like uh, a bit less than a sixteenth of an inch. And uh, I've super glued it with equal spacing here onto the top. But I want to leave that shiny brass, and so I have to have a way to paint it. So what I'm going to do is uh, try to make up uh, six little pieces that have uh, a half circle cut out of them and then glue them in each spot. So I have some one eighth by one quarter basswood here and I've marked six pieces. Just get my saw and just cut approximately halfway. So what works is a small square file. Just locate one edge in the cut mark and then file down about halfway through the wood. That's about a sixteenth of an inch deep. Then pick up a round file and carefully put a round shape to that V you made. Now we've got a nice radius that goes about halfway through the wood. They'll fit on just like that. And uh, now I'll make up six pieces. And here are those little pieces super glued into position. On the cockpit, I've used two 3 sixteenths uprights for, this, for the side of the companionway doors. And I just have made small panels there. I've located the holes to mount this companionway hatch and it will screw on just in front right here. And I've also located the holes for the skylight and the forward hatch. I want more taper on the cockpit sides than appears here. So I've modified my pattern and I'm going to trace a line and file and sand it to this shape. So now I've trimmed the sides of the cockpit down and I did the stern area here and I fixed a uh, sort of a full tiller onto the after end of the cockpit. So now I'll remove these unpainted items and give them a coat of primer. So I have a coat of primer on my deck fixtures. The cockpit area is going to need a little bit more paint and uh, a little bit more color. But I'll just leave that for, for now. Now I want to take a look at how I'm going to feed the sheet lines down below the deck to the servo. I found a piece of brass tubing that's three eighths of an inch outside diameter and it is solid brass from an old light fixture. There is no seam on the inside. It's all smooth. So this might work okay for my purpose. There's a thread on both ends here. So I think I should be able to position a section of this on the deck and use that to feed my sheet lines through. I'll be drilling the after hole here and the forward hole right here. So here's the after hole drilled and I'll just put in the tube and I've marked it just about level with the top of the hatch. And I'll cut off the forward post just above the level of that hatch. And here are the through deck fittings. One forward. And one aft. On the outer jib, I've used a common piece of fishing tackle here and crimped on 
a 1.5 millimeter cotton line, the same line that I've used elsewhere on the model. And I've run the sheet line through an eye on the top of the bowsprit. On the inner jib, I've used the same piece of fishing tackle. I've got both sheet lines running down through this tube. I've done the same thing here on the main boom, and the line is crimped, and it runs down through the after tube. And down below deck, I've got the two forward sheet lines fastened on to the second hole in my servo arm. And the other end of the arm, I have the main sheet tied on. And of course, I'm wondering if one of the cheapest servos possible to buy on eBay can do the job. This is an MG996. I've reconnected the motor, I've placed the battery in position, I've got my electronics pod in position, everything is basically hooked up, and now I'll turn it on and we'll see what we get. First I turn on my Dumbo RC transmitter, turn on the boat, forward, reverse, R port starboard on the rudder, and the servo. I can't believe that this will work. It's so simple. I'll replace the hatch. It'll go in for a tight beat and out for a broad reach and possibly a, a tight run. Forward, re reverse, port, starboard. I've got about 45 degrees max on that. On the servo here, I've trimmed off the lines where I've tied the sheets onto the arm so that they don't extend down far enough to get wrapped up in the shaft. One thing that has to be done now is lubricate the shaft tubes. So I'm pointing at the rudder shaft tube hole, and down here is the shaft tube hole. Most RC hobby shops will sell you one of these units. This is marine grease. And the idea is to put that small point into the hole. the grease comes out at the upper and lower bearing. I've cut a small piece of heater hose and slit it like this and now I'll place that over top of the hole on the rudder shaft tube. That keeps things cleaner down below. And now I'll pump some grease into the propeller shaft tube. And here you can see a blob of grease at the top end bearing and down below grease at the lower end bearing. So that shaft tube is full. And I'll set another small piece of hose over top the hole. Just like that. So now the deck on the gaff cutter is pretty well complete. On the forward hatch, I've drilled four holes on each side at the top. These are going to hold the little pins that I use to secure the hatches. It's a 1 8 cotter pin cut off to the right length with a bit of string attached to the end of it, crimped on. So I can then uh, easily pick it up. And I also have extra holes on the hatch so that when I remove the bowsprit pin and the mass pin, no matter which side, I've got a safe place to put it so it doesn't slip overboard. I'm using two pins at opposite corners to hold down the hatches. 
and they're pressed in on an angle like this so that they can't work themselves loose. And I thought that it was possible that the cutter pins holding in the bowsprit and the mast could work their way loose. So I've made a little loop like this and that's just forced around an eye. I used the black plastic that came from a shrimp tray, cut it out to the right size and super glued these panels onto the skylight to make it look like glass or simulate glass and everything is covered with two coats of varathane. The chain plates are made of picture hangers and I have painted them flat black and then put two coats of varathane on top. I used a grommet to make a porthole on the main hatch companionway. I've painted the companionway doors red, cockpit floor red, and the tiller red. I've also tied it here to prevent any lines from getting caught underneath the tiller and possibly breaking it. And this hole is for the cotter pin hatch hole down. On the starboard side, I've used a section of a ballpoint point pen, about 3 eighths of an inch OD, and I can run my antenna up through that. I've made a wind indicator for the top of the mast and it turns very easily. And here's the cutter. 560 square inches of sail in a fresh breeze. So now to collapse the rig for transportation, I'm going to undo the sheet line on the inner jib and on the main boom. I'm going to make sure that I've got the sail servo in the open, loose position. Next, I'm going to remove the pins on the mast and on the bowsprit. And I'm going to place them into the forward hatch to keep them safe. Now I'm going to let the bowsprit come back and I'm going to disconnect the stay up forward and just let that drop. So now my rig is loose. I've moved the bowsprit out. I'm letting everything come back. And the rig just sets down onto the hull like this. I've made a uh, handheld cradle sling to carry this model with one hand. And this just slips over the uh, stern. And the bow. And now I can easily lift the model with one hand. So now the cutter is fully loaded with electronics and batteries. It's ready to run as soon as the sails are up. So let's see what we've got for weight. About 28 pounds. So what I want to do next is take this cutter down to the water and trim the water line with internal ballast. I'll be bringing with me these one pound weights. They're wrapped and taped in plastic. Next step, down to the water on a calm day. So here I am down at the little lake. And it's about as calm as it gets. Now I'm going to put the rig up. We've got a very light breeze coming from the uh, direction here. You can see it up top on the wind indicator. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn on the boat now and uh, work my way out to uh, about one foot deep. And I'll bring weights with me and I'll just get a feel for, uh, for uh, the situation. I think I can use one pound up forward. There. She's grounded. I'm going to open the hatch up forward and set one of these weights in. She still moves in a very light wind. I'm not using any of the auxiliary power. One pound of trim right up forward. I got it on the center line. 
seems to be okay. I don't see any problem. She looks fairly well balanced. Oh, I just hit bottom. I think I oh I hit a log. <laughs> and here's a puff of wind. Sails are filling okay. Well, it sails, no question. It Yeah, so she'll definitely come about under her own sail power, even in this light wind. But I do have a lot of uh, weight and momentum here. I think I have the uh, hull uh, about as balanced as I can get it at this point. So that brings us to the end of part seven and the end of this build series. In the next video, we're gonna take this cutter out and we're gonna try it in serious weather in real conditions. Don't miss that video. Thanks for watching.